Hey, how's it going guys? It's Sam here, back again with another video for you guys. And today we're going to be doing just a little bit of overclocking on the new X79 Fatality Professional motherboard. And uh, as you guys know, I just unboxed this motherboard yesterday, so I was really excited to test it out. And uh, so I'm going to show you guys some of the results that I got from the motherboard. Um, I actually quite like it. But, uh, give you guys a little tour as well of the UEFI BIOS. So, here it is, this is the UEFI BIOS, so you can see it's got the mouse support, but I'm not going to use it because I'm more of a keyboard and mouse guy, or just the keyboard guy, I'm sorry, uh, just the keyboard guy. So, uh, what we have here is the main screen, and uh, you get some specs on the processor, the memory, things like that. And uh, as you can see right here, we've got that X79 Professional. It is using the P1.20 UEFI. And uh, this is the Intel Core i7. It's not going to say 3960X, but that's what it is. And it's running at 3.3 GHz, which I have overclocked to 4.8. And uh, 4.8 is actually a pretty good overclock, uh, at least on this processor. Um, uh, you know, some of them can meet, meet uh, 5 GHz, but um, I've tried and I haven't been successful yet, so if you guys have any tips on what settings I should change to try to hit 5 GHz, uh, be sure to leave it in the description box below. Otherwise, uh, we're going to move on. We've got the cache size, we've got uh, total memory, we've got 16 gigs actually of um, well, thanks to Kingston, we got 16 gigs of uh, DDR3-2133 memory, so this is definitely really fast stuff. And uh, as you know, this motherboard only has four DIMM slots. It's meant for gamers, so um, that's why they don't have eight on this one. And I think it is targeted very well because gamers, I don't think, will need as much as 64 gigs of memory. So um, next thing we're going to move on to, obviously, is the OC tweaker because that's what you guys came to this video for. Um, first thing I said actually was the turbo right here to 4.8 gigahertz, and that's actually their auto uh, overclock settings, but their auto overclock settings was actually pretty decent, um, I might add, for, you know, a... Uh, uh, automatic overclocking utility, I guess. So it was actually pretty good. I opted to use it. So I uh, went with the Turbo 4.8 gigahertz right here. And uh, right here, you can see the CPU ratio setting, set it to manual, max ratio 48, of course. And once you set it to uh, Turbo 4.8, that stuff, a lot of this uh, settings come automatically. So um, yeah. And uh, right here you've got internal PLO over voltage, you want to enable that. Uh, OS real-time adjust CPU ratio, I disabled it, you can enable it, whatever you want. Uh, Intel speed step, I enabled that. Uh, turbo boost power limit, um, this is actually all auto, so I guess they set it to 500 and 480 and 500, and I don't think that high is necessary, I'm pretty sure you could get away with like 300. Uh, but since they set it to that, 500 doesn't hurt, so might as well leave it there. Uh, long duration maintained 10, and I think that was auto too. I didn't really touch that at all. And um, so down here we've got additional turbo voltage that I didn't touch. Active processor cores, of course, all, or else this is kind of a waste of time. And we've got uh, the base clock, 100, of course. I wouldn't touch that too much. Um, you know, this, this uh, Sandy Bridge E is still Sandy Bridge based, so you can just overclock it just like uh, a Sandy Bridge, just by adjusting the multiplier. And uh, with, the, with, with the memory, I just opted to go with the XMP settings for now. You know, um, because those are pretty much going to be your most stable settings. Um, I did XMP Profile 1, which is DDR3-2133, uh, 11, 12, 11, 30, and uh, that's pretty much it. But of course, you can select anything else if you want. If you are really having trouble, you can definitely set it to Auto or Standard, and uh, that'll bring it down to 1336. So, um, but yeah, but you know, this Kingston memory has been good, so um, no problems there. Uh, DRAM timing control, as you can see, it's all auto right now. I haven't touched any of that. I've just been working on the CPU for now. Uh, in this screen, you've got the uh, 
uh, voltage configuration. And uh, as you can see, I think I believe these three were automatic. So all you really had to do is disable the VRM protection and uh, these they were preset. Oh, I think the fixed voltage was a bit low, so I upped it a little bit to 1.480 volts. Uh, I don't know if that's a little too high for 4.8 gigahertz, but it works and it's pretty stable. Um, over here we've got load line calibration, set that to level one. Otherwise everything else could just be left on auto. So I'm really uh, digging this board on all the uh, things you could just set on auto and you know it would just work. Uh, right here we've got the computer or CPU configuration. And as you can see pretty much Everything is uh, stock, as you will, uh, except for Intel virtualization technology. I disable it, you know, I kind of feel like it does something, but it probably doesn't. And uh, so next thing we have is the CPU power management configuration. Got speed step enabled and everything else pretty much disabled, at least all of the power saving features. Uh, PL over voltage still enabled and turbo boost power limit manual. And these were things that we set up on the first screen. And once you set it on auto, actually, these will already go to these right here. So there's no adjustments needed. And I really like that. Um, I'll show you guys a little bit more of the BIOS since we're here. And I'll probably post this video along with the review. So it's nice to be able to see what the BIOS entails. Uh, here we've got the PCI link speed. Of course, I'm using Gen 2 only. You could use Gen 3 if you want. You can change it to Gen 3, but I've got a 6970 installed here. It doesn't even have support for uh, PCI Express 3.0, so Gen 2 is perfectly fine. And that's pretty much it here with the North Bridge, the South Bridge. You guys can take a look at the bio storage configuration. I really like how it comes standard in AHCI mode. So for those who get, uh, who accidentally leave it in uh, IDE mode and then install Windows and then you realize AHCI, uh, you'll want AHCI. So then you got to reinstall everything again. And uh, it's nice that they leave it in AHCI mode. So here's a couple more settings. I'm not going to go through all of them because you guys are probably pretty bored. Here we've got hardware monitor, I just left everything full on. This thing has actually two CPU fans, so uh, one of them is three pin actually, so you can have a three pin kind of act like it were a four pin because the motherboard does the uh, fan controlling, which is nice. Uh, down here, over pr uh, temperature protection, you'll want to disable that. And here's the boot settings. I disabled the full screen logo, but uh, if you want it, you get fatality's face uh, somewhere here so I, I didn't want that so I removed it boot failure guard um, that's nice for overclockers you know if you fail I think three times you can set the times at least um, it'll automatically reset the CMOS for you so that's definitely cool we're just gonna save the changes and exit and that's pretty much it for now uh, while it's booting, I'll actually show you the rig, just like how I do with my other video, so you guys have an idea of what I'm using here. I'm going to try to focus in a little bit better. And down here, motherboard, of course, we've got that X79 Fatality motherboard. Um, so far, an excellent motherboard. I'm really digging it. Uh, here we've got the MSI 6970. Of course, I've got a custom cooling solution on it. It's got the uh, Accelero Extreme 7970. Great cooler, runs very cool, and uh, that's great. So I'll come back in a little bit to the rest of the components, but we are going to fire a, up a stability test. And what we've got here, I've actually transitioned to using the ADA64 uh, stability test because I actually sort of like that one a lot better I'm going to try to make it so that you guys can actually see. I don't know if you guys can see, but hopefully you can. And uh, there it is. So what we've got here is we want to go to tools and just run the system stability test. 
And uh, if you guys are ever overclocking and you guys need a utility, definitely Ada64, great, great uh, utility for um, stability testing. So right here we've got the uh, stability test started. It's already pushing our CPU to 100% and we can kind of have the uh, information about the CPU on the right side. We'll run core temp as well, so we'll you know kind of know what kind of temperatures we're getting right there. And uh, anybody want CPU-Z? We'll get CPU-Z as well, just for the heck of it, while we're running this test. And as you can see, we're running at 4.8 gigahertz. Wow, it's pushing on well, one point five three six volts so kind of feels like a little bit higher uh, high I wouldn't really run it at 1.536 but that's what the board is running it at I'm pretty sure with a little optimization I could get that uh, voltage number a little bit lower 1.544 volts looks a bit high uh, it's at 1.5 1.54 so yeah it does look a little bit high but um, I'll kind of do a little tweaking to see if I could get that to drop a little, but um, looks like it's perfectly stable at this point. So that's pretty much it. And uh, down here with the temperatures, we're looking at about uh, 82 degrees, 84 right here uh, for core four. So not too bad. It's definitely going a little higher than I want it to be. Um, but, eh, it's alright. Show you guys the rest of the rig I'm running here right now. And, uh, so, I've covered the motherboard, I've covered the graphics card, and, uh, the CPU cooler, I'm pretty sure you guys know what this is. This is the Fantex, uh, the PHTC14PE. Um, great cooler, it's, you know, just absolutely huge, and it is sustaining the uh, temperatures right now at, well, 70 something, but it maxed out at 84 earlier, so about 84 degrees at the maximum. Um, we've got, here, let me lift this cable up for you, hopefully I don't blue screen this computer, but uh, we've got the Kingston Hyper X, I believe this is a Genes Genesis? Uh, DDR3 2133 megahertz memory, great memory, really fast, really, really fast stuff. And um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Processor inside, yeah, it's the uh, i7-3960X processor, um, Intel's top of the line consumer level processor. Down below on the lower level of the tech deck, uh, we've got the OCZ Vertex 3 SSD that we're using right now. And uh, of course, this bench is the high speed PC uh, te top deck tech station. So that's what it is. Yeah. I have links to all these, all this stuff uh, in the description, you know, if you guys are interested in any of this stuff, of course. And uh, we'll kind of move back to the stability testing. So, um, let me make it more visible for you guys. Hopefully you can see it. I don't know. I don't even know if you guys can see it. And that's that's hard to see. That is definitely hard to see here. Let, let's zoom in a little bit and uh, show you guys what we've got here. So, ooh. All right. So we've gotten past about three, four minutes or so. Uh, no problem. Of course, I would not expect there to be a problem running at these kind of voltages. Um, definitely going to do some tweaking later on tonight, see if I could get the voltage a lot lower. I'm aiming for under 1.5 volts because 1.54 does seem a bit high for just 4.8 gigahertz. But of course, uh, with these Sandy Bridge e-chips, we are running at around the limit. I've seen people do 5 gigahertz. I've seen people do higher. Uh, usually higher means, you know, a lot better cooling and I'm on air cooling right now. So, and that, you know, that's not very really helping. And on top of that, I mean, if you look at the temperature right here, um, it's not that cool inside my room either. It's actually kind of warm. About 20, 
21 degrees Celsius and uh, about 71 or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So down here we've got the uh, CPU Z screen right there. As you can see, again, we're running at 4.8 gigahertz. Um, there's the memory right there, 1066. And uh, I'm just using the XMP profile. You know, haven't tweaked that at all yet. So I will be doing that sometime in the future. But uh, there you have it. The stress test is still going five minutes and uh, you guys are probably getting pretty bored right now so I'm just gonna cut it short so uh, that's all I really have for you guys um, you know if this video helped you guys out you know and you guys are interested and in, I guess purchasing these uh, parts uh, definitely give me a thumbs up or something you know uh, it really does help me out a lot uh, definitely subscribe to my channel if you guys like this video and uh, I'll catch you guys later socket <laughs> especially when compared to the LGA 1155 um, otherwise you know love the color design um, you know I think I think ASRock does a fantastic job with these boards so right there we've got uh, two another two uh, memory slots right there got that 8 pin header right up top you know right in the center you've got the uh, of course the LGA 2011 socket for those LGA 2011 CPUs Right under that Fatality branded heatsink, we've got that 16 plus 2 power phase design. And they are, of course, using very high quality components for that. And uh, on the right side, we've got the 24 pin connector. We've got uh, two CPU fan headers. That's very interesting. Uh, they've got two. Same thing with the uh, Z68 Professional, actually. What am I saying? Um, we've got that big heat pipe running across from the fatality heatsink to what I'm going to call the professional series heatsink because that's what it's branded.